Hi and good morning. This is the first video that I've ever done, so this is basically an intro to what am I doing. <clears throat> so I'm going to start a channel because I want to document this process and I think it's probably best to explain what the process is. Basically it decided to buy a sailboat with my dad and we found a 1983 Trans World 41 foot catch. Um, she's a full keel, leaky tiki, put that out there. And I know right off the bat, I know there's a lot of anti leaky tiki people. Um, I've certainly read and seen plenty to suggest that there's a, there's an anti and then there's a following. So essentially, we took on this boat because it it works for us it it works for what we're planning we'd like to leave and do some sailing in the bahamas some snorkeling just some some moderate sailing i am not a sailor i'm gonna put that out there right now i'm absolutely not i'm actually a horse person which i'm trying to figure out naming this channel probably something like saddles and sails because basically that's that's my life. Like, I ride and train horses. I'm good at it. I teach, ride, train horses, and I can make them, I can take a nasty old mangy nag that you picked up from a livestock auction and turn it into a pretty cute, nice show horse. I do not have that skill set here um, at the boat. Absolutely not. Like, I blunder constantly. There's a whole new vocabulary that I'm learning. So, I invite you all aboard to follow along the progress. I think I'm going to start by saying some of the things that we we know we have to do, right? We know we know about the coring and teak decks. Okay, so I've had to learn all about that. And our boat, fortunately, the second owner, we're the fourth. The second owner did a fabulous job loving this boat and he recocked all the seams and really took did a lot of work that saved the boat according to the surveyor said this this was awesome so we get to check that box at least for now although looking on the horizon yes there's probably going to be a recording project just to keep the boat the boat it'll stay in the family for years this is again a project that I'm doing with my dad and one of the reasons why I decided to do this is because I recently lost my mom and my sister and we had a boat in the 90s and we did a lot of family sailing, but I was a teenager at the time. And frankly, I didn't pay attention. I was more like, look at me, I'm in a bikini and I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sunbathing on the deck. And so now, like, <laughs> oh shit, like I seriously need to learn this stuff because this is, this is going to be my responsibility. So I'm taking a completely different tack <laughs> at it and trying to have trying to have fun and get some quality time with my dad who is getting older he is a sailor and he's a plumber and electrician and he can come in and pretty much diagnose anything and then he coaches me and how to fix it you should have been there for my impeller lesson um but i can now change an impeller without any any questions and the heat exchanger as well i can clean that out pretty well so i'm learning so you're going to get a lot of uh Rah, 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 me arguing, ah, me and my dad. He accuses me of wanting to reinvent the wheel. Like I might be guilty. I might be. Uh, so I don't want to get too much into up in my personal space, kind of like you don't want to look at my face. I think we're here for boats. If you are interested in the horse part of this, I do hunter jumper stuff, fox hunting, three day venting. I teach, train, and have some horses for sale. I spend a week at the boat and then I'm going to go home for a week and try to reorientate with, with the horses until it's time to cast the lines on the boat. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is training horses and selling them to get the numbers down so that I don't have to manage them while I'm sailing. Our projected departure date right now is November 2021, so we are in the middle of January 2021, um, bought the boat about three months ago. And she's here at Deltaville Yachting Center in Deltaville, Virginia, right on the Chesapeake Bay, getting her refit. So also a lot of the stuff that's getting done is getting done by the boatyard. And I 
I will ask them questions. I will stay involved, but I'm not going to try to say, yes, I can do this myself. There's a lot of, there's a lot of those videos. So I'm going to do a ton of before and after videos to, to go here. Here's how it looked. Here's what we did. And if there's technical stuff that was sort of bumpy and even the boatyard people are, are about, you know, struggling through it, I'll probably put some of that on here too, just to A, provide information to people who are also doing a similar project and also to solicit advice from all of you folks out there that are really good sailors and have so much experience amongst you that I cannot compete. I just sit in awe and I just listen. That being said, if anybody wants to go and get a horse or has any questions about their horse, by all means, shoot me a video and I'll let you know my thoughts on what your horse is doing. So that being said, this video is different than everything else in that it's going to capture this experience from barn to boat, uh, refitting the boat, retraining horses, going back to the barn, going back to the boat, a father-daughter relationship. I have a husband that sort of lingers out there all the you know he's out there too so he might make an appearance although he's camera shy um some of the things you're not going to see on this is frankly bikinis it's the middle of january so i'm not putting on a bikini for anyone and i'm not sure you'd want to see anything underneath all all these layers because i'm chubby and old so probably not going to see any bikinis unless something extraordinary happens or I have some really cute friends though that might come out boating when the boat finally gets into the water. So meh, I'll ask them. We'll see if they have any volunteers. But um, other than that, you're just not going to, you're not going to see that. Uh, let's see. The other thing you're not going to see, I'm not going to ask you for money. That seems to be a big thing out there right now for sailing for, you know, how to make money. I make my own money. I sail horses. Sell, I don't sail horses, I sell horses. Um, so at this point, I don't see any reason to ask for any money. This is not why I'm doing this. And frankly, I'm documenting this process because it's an interesting life that I have an opportunity to live. And it's some time with my dad that after losing two members of my family, um, I, I want that. I want that experience. And I want to be able to look back and go, look what me and dad did. So he's going to make in a couple appearances. He's He's grumpy. He's salty. He's definitely salty. Um, so I don't, I don't really know about the, how, how all this works. I'm just going to put it together and put it up there and just start it with season one, episode one. I hope we don't have more than too many seasons getting this boat ready. A couple of things. I'm just going to pull you up to date on the project. We had a survey done. Uh, the third owners, while the boat was in their possession, somebody smashed the bow sprint. Um, the bob stay and the bob stay chain plate bolts got bent and slightly pulled out. So our first project, you know, our first big issue was to pull it out. The boat is now out of the water, so we're on the hard. And we pulled the bow sprint off and it is now at a place called SNS Marine getting the bow pulpit. Rails and stanchions are being all done, so I'm going to give you some updates on that. I think what I'm going to do is probably do a video for each subject, as it each issue as it comes apart, and then as we pull it together, then I'll do a whole piece of this is bow sprint project. Um, my husband is a wood guy, so I'm really fortunate that he got a big giant piece of white oak. Our bow sprint's about 12 feet long, somewhere around there. Uh, so he's currently cutting it, slicing it, doing everything to make it the right shape, size. I'm going to try to get some video of that. But he's kind of an ass and he doesn't like me videoing. I'm like, I'm just a boyer. I just want to watch, you know. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to get that, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. Because I'm fascinated with that whole idea of putting the bow sprint on. Um, we had to get the jib repaired. It got torn out. Um... So we'll be able to put the jib up. We did order a new mainsail because the mainsail was pretty, pretty old. And along the way, we have discovered a couple of rotted areas, but I'll get into that later. So the big project right now that I think everybody's hyper focused on is getting the bow sprint on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some of that after this intro video. Oh, also electronics so I'm gonna do a quick tour of the boat here in a minute and the boat basically didn't come with anything like it has this little mangy like little impeller but not impeller like bent little wire at the top of the mast so 
it's kind of hilarious but that's all coming off so we have um all new electronics going in and um an engine likely gonna happen the engine works but it's a ford lehman pugo discontinued engine and we've already had trouble finding like the salt water pump can't find it and i'd like to have a pump like that on board an extra one so i don't want to we're going to go with a Yanmar 80 horsepower, something with some universal parts that we can find just about everywhere. Because, again, Dad's getting older, so these are things that fall on me to do. And since I bimboed my way in my teenage years, I really didn't learn what I needed to learn to be competent. Except to know that parts, when you need them, I don't want to have those backup parts. So there's things like impellers and... Um, water pumps and maybe a starter would like to have an extra one of those on board and finding parts I don't I don't want this we've already had trouble trying to find parts just to get it just to get it you know where it's at now today but it does run good um it has 1400 hours on it the <sighs> there's some dispute about whether or not it had four or 1400 when I finally located the second owner he clarified that it had 1400 hours somewhere along the way somebody painted the engine gold I'll show you guys all that you know I have a thought when you but when you're selling a boat don't paint over rust and rot and think that it's gonna you know make the boat sell like people can get hurt you know people can get hurt when you hide shit like rot and fortunately when the bob stay got bent and I started really investigating the bow sprint and I happen to have some experience with wood I am the one that was like, mm, this is shady, this this is kind of sketchy. And we started disassembling it because I just, we couldn't really quite pinpoint if there was a rot once we took the big brackets off. Guess what? It was rotten. Like, it was going to snap. And somebody just slapped some paint over top of it and some epoxy and filled up all the rot holes to make it look like it wasn't rotted. Like, that's just wrong. So, don't do that. That's just shitty. And that kind of stuff, it's going to follow you. Um... But I digress. So, bow sprint, bow pulpit, jib, Genoa. Somebody talked to me about when, do, when, when is a sail a jib and when is it a Genoa? Because I still can't figure that out. The other thing I can't figure out is, is it porthole, port light, dead light? Like, what's the deal with these terms? The other thing I find really interesting, and <laughs> maybe you guys are going to be interested in, in the nautical world, there is very similar words that mean very similar things than in the equestrian world. So the the one word that comes to mind, and we're going to talk about it later, but just put this in your cap, is martingale. Like, martingale is a device that holds a horse's nose to his girth and kind of pulls his head down and stops him from flipping his head up. Um, and I think it has the same kind of concept at a bow sprint. So it's basically a bob stay where you take the bow sprint and it goes down into the bow sprint chain plate holds the head down. So I find that's really fascinating and it happens a lot. So I'm going to chime in. Whenever I see that happening, I'm going to be like, hey guys, guess what? There's an, this, this word is used in the equestrian world and this is what it means. So maybe that'll be interesting. All right. So I have gone on and on for way longer than I anticipated. What I want to do now is show you the boat. I'm going to do an interior tour and be like, hey, check it out. And then I'll do an exterior tour and then I might just upload this. I don't even know what I'm going to name this because this is like a dad project set. I, I have no idea. So this is so ad hoc that, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so uh, with that in mind, we don't have a name for the boat yet either. Um, let's see. We've gone round and round with different names. And frankly, I want to call it Bob, right? Because the world in a, is in a really shitty political climate no matter what side of the bench you are on which frankly I'm a, I'm a middle person so you're not going to see me on anything other than to look around and be like this is so fucked up right now because it is um I do have a law degree I do have a master's degree so there's things that I look back and and I look around and I'm like oh fuck that. so I'm smart enough to know I want a bug out boat and I want to name my bug out boat Bob Bob so everybody laughs at me when I say I'm going to name this king boat Bob. But it, it's on point. Like, for real, like, it's on point. So that being said, 
My dad likes the name equanimity, which means balance, calm, serenity, mind. And that's pretty nice too. Um, we haven't locked in that answer yet, Bob. So, Bob, ah, see, Bob, Bob just keeps coming up. How do you not love Bob? Okay, so I'm gonna affectionately call this boat Bob. My dad's gonna come up behind me one of these days when I'm doing this video and be like, Nicole, it's equanimity. We need to have a saucy and elegant sort of word. And I'm like, yep, Bob. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to Bob and we're gonna do a little interior walkthrough. We are in refit mode. Um, I'm not super clean. I'm not one of those super hyper organized people. I'm super excited when I get a sweatshirt on that's not stained. That's a, that's a win for me for the day. So we're in, don't, this is not pristine. This is not, I'm not showing you this boat. She's not for sale. So I'm showing you the boat to give you a sense of what the layout is, why it appealed to me and dad and, um, some of the things that we're, we're going to be working on. And I'd love, again, there's spots where I'm going to say, Hey, give me some input. What do you think about this? All right. So without further ado, welcome on board, Bob. <laughs> All right. This is the V-Birth and Forward Cabin. Uh, at the moment, we have been investigating the chain plates. Let me see, give you some lights. The Bobstay chain plate that's down inside the hall, we believe is fiberglassed in. Have yet to be able to actually find it. So something for more discussion is who has experience with these Bobstay chain plates? What can they tell me? Um, love love any input you can offer obviously the v-birth right now is looking back it up a little bit is looking kind of full uh but i know boat people they get this so but i just love all those look at the little shelves and the little tooling i just love 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 the layout of this boat uh, and you come over here we can shut this door Oh, there's yours truly. Um, mirror. And then you turn right here and there's your forward head. And the shower and everything. So, the shower drains, as far as I can tell, this shower drains into the bilge. I know I'm going to say that again. It drains directly into the bilge. There is no sump pump under it. That's something I know we need to talk about. The other thing we're really contemplating is putting in those composting toilets mm, I don't know but I just love everything about this this whole cabin so my dad gets the v-birth he likes the v-birth um, the other thing that's really cute is this tiny this little closet here right um, something interesting and hey when you're when you're doing maintenance you see if I can there we go when you're doing maintenance right up there as you can see it's disconnected at the moment the deck fittings had not been maintained they leaked and now this bulkhead wall it's not really a bulkhead wall actually it's just an interior closet wall we discovered that so that's on the list to get uh we're gonna cut it out and scab it in and then glass over it um anyway so note to self maintain the deck fittings don't let them leak Apparently that's, that's important. All right. So moving to midships. I told you it was messy. I ain't even trying to lie to cover it up. Told you. I like, but, but think about the mess, right? Just everybody just take a moment and absorb what that mess is. Boxes. And inside that box is the radar. And inside this little box is the tarp plotter. Uh, I believe this box is the auto helm, autopilot. So I'm going to do a whole unboxing video to give you guys an idea. These are all our new electronics. Tomorrow the gimbaled radar mount is going to come in. So it's going to be a, ma a mast mounted gimbaled mount. I'm kind of excited about that. Obviously there's a TV I'm sure you both, everyone knows that underneath all of here, these are all storage. 
Back behind here is storage. Here is storage. Storage. The table. The lips come up and create a full um, big table. And then these also open, which I actually really like. At the moment, I have tools in here. It just makes it easier to work on the boat when you can just open a little place and then they're put away as well. So that's kind of nice, easy to put away. Um, moving towards the nav station, electrical panel. Everything works in the electrical panel, so that's good. This is our nav station. Right now it's kind of the catch-all. Dog chewies, threads, needles, uh, parts. The whole bit. Um, but there's some things that I would like to really consider, especially now that we have the electronics. Do you see this open space here underneath the bookshelf? I feel like that should be filled in with a wall. Or not a wall. Okay, a little bulkhead, I guess. If it's a little bulkhead, if it's like not a primary, is all vertical walls in a boat called bulkhead? Somebody help me with that. Uh, anyway, I feel like that space should be filled up and the electronic, the electronics hung there so that you can do your chart plotting. One thing I do remember from living on the boat not and, and sailing as a teenager was navigation. I love charts, charts, real charts. I'm not sure I'm super keen on the electronic stuff. I love looking at charts. So I want to still maintain this so that I can just, it's so relaxing to have coffee and a chart and just see where you're going. Um, the other thing is we have dual displays. So we have the chart plotter, but we also have these alter, alter, alternate displays that I would like to be able to see from the cockpit and from the interior cabin. So if I'm cooking or down below I can look up at say for example the depth sounder which I'm sort of kind of nervous about depth you know depth obviously we have a six foot keel so I think I'm hyper focused on depth I'd like to get some ideas from y'all does that need to go that bookshelf too like what is that is that even a good idea I feel like those things are gonna go flying that all has to come down right like Okay, so moving to the companionway. Obviously, this is our little companionway. It's the engine is behind those stairs. Um, and those stairs pull out. Here's the galley. Now, I like the boats with the wraparound galley. They're just so pretty. You come down and it just looks like a little apartment. But my dad is like, you're going to really love this galley when we're underway and you have that wall so it's just kind of this little wall around my dad's like you know when you're underway and i think he might have a point right like if you're underway and you're sitting here cooking you can just sort of sit your feet in like up your toes against the the counter and lean up against the wall hold right here and you're cooking <laughs> I'm so sure I can I can't cook standing up straight normal so yeah sure yeah I'm gonna be cooking like that um I'm not sure I'm gonna be I might be I don't know what I'm gonna be doing but I get it like I get it so it makes sense even if you're just walking to the back to the aft cabin so our boat is a center cockpit I love center cockpits because I love aft cabins I might I know there's some, there's again, there's discussion, you know, stern cockpit, aft cockpit versus a center cockpit. And I just really liked the idea of having two private cabins. So I'm going to flip the camera back around because the other thing I wanted to show you about the V-Birth was how it has its own door. So you go in there, you have your V-Birth, you have your head, you have this little private area, which I think, you know, it's me and my dad. And my mom passed away and dad's always sort of going, I get to the islands, you know, I'll find me a cute little island lady. Like if he ever does do something like that, I'm not going to be wanting to participate in, 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 in that. I'd like him to have his own space. So, um, 
I'm just gonna flip it around so you can see what kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, so it's nice to have this little middle area where we can all sit together and laugh, but then dad and whatever he decides to do can have that space. Anyway, so that TV storage companion way. Oh yeah, I know, I was gonna show you the engine. All right, so here's our engine that I was telling you about. And and this is what I was saying about painting, painting over stuff. Like, seriously, you had to paint over the rust because no one could see that it was rust. Um, then I talked to the second engine owner and he was like, uh, no, that's not what color that engine was. So that's just so stupid. Like, I don't see a point. I, I mean... It just takes away from your ability to really assess what's going on. And maybe that that was the whole point, was to hide. I mean, but I mean, we picked up on it right away. Like, who would do that? That's just so ghetto. I don't know, it's just really ghetto. But it doesn't matter. Uh, this is getting, this is that 60 horsepower Ford Lehman Pugo engine that we were, that I was talking about. We've put on new hoses. Like I said, we've put on the new impeller. We put, we cleaned out the heat exchanger. Uh, it runs. It really does. It doesn't sound bad. But my dad thinks it's underpowered and he hates, 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 hates that we can't get parts for it. We've already, we do need to get a new OC water pump and we are already having a hard time finding it. So we're, we just don't want, he doesn't want that. I don't blame him. I don't know if I really want it either. Not sure what we're going to do with this engine, but it does run like a little top. It just purrs along. All right. Um, okay. So here's a little sink. See, I'm not much of a housewife. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that, mm -mm, not right now. I have my moments where I pick, start cleaning up. And then this area, again, it's sort of messy, kind of embarrassed, but I was doing the port lights. So all the port lights have new, um, new seals in them. So this is the aft cabin bunk, aft cabin. And lots of little spaces. We have this closet. I'm going to turn. Dun, 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 dun. Old closet. Mizzen mask coming down. Little closet. Oh, I forgot to show you guys something else. Aft cabin head. Again, shower. And I have yet to identify if it drains into the bilge, which I'm going to guess that it does. Some ideas from you all would be great. I'm always counter it, balancing it with, and there's the hatch. Okay, there's two last things I want to show you down below. Batteries are down there for the moment. Stuffing box is right in there. We just had that redone. All right, so the two things that I want to show you that are like my favorite, okay, are one, check this out. Oh, I guess I, I can't do this one. Look at that. Inside that little cubby coming right, right behind the stove air conditioning and heating oh and it works so good super excited about that okay and then coming around a cute cute lantern that came with all of the boats and then the butterfly hatch it's so cute it's just so cute okay so welcome aboard bob for the moment um i think that's just about everything so some of the things i'd love feedback on are what do y'all think about the nav station do we put a wall up there do i take down that shelf i just not creative this way like i see it as a potential problem but i have i have zero ability to create or visualize something else like oh uh, okay so um this boat this video is already like 29 almost 30 minutes, which means I've been talking for 30 minutes. <laughs> so sorry if you guys, and anybody gets to the end of this, I should pay you because this is ridiculous. Um, but that means I'm going to go up above and do a walk around of the boat. Bye.